Hello everybody. Happy Tuesday. Um, welcome back to chemistry after the long weekend. Today's target is to reflect on what we have learned about the coronavirus. Okay. Um, before I get into today's lesson, I have a couple of announcements and updates regarding school and regarding the coronavirus. So, announcements first. Um, this Wednesday, aka tomorrow, Wednesday, May 27th, from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock, you guys can drive on up to the school or come on up to the school, you know, with a parent or something like that. We ask that you stay in your vehicles when you come on up to the school, but you can get your stuff. Um, so drive on up, you know, bring your masks with if you've got them. Um, and a staff member will be there to help get you your things from your locker. So if you left a backpack or a winter jacket or something like that, you can get those things on Wednesday. If you have more questions, please shoot me an email, uh, and I can do my best to answer those questions quickly and efficiently. Okay. All right. Updates on COVID. Um, so on Friday, I mentioned talking about how COVID attacks people. Specifically, I mentioned that COVID attacks a particular part of the, the lung tissue. It's, it's called the ACE2 receptor. Um, and basically, this is absolutely true. It does attack these ACT, A, ACE2 receptors. Um, but one thing that has changed in the past couple of weeks since I got this information about COVID is how it affects young children. Um, so in the video, I said that it did not affect young children. And that's not 100% correct. The virus should not make young children sick. In the vast majority of cases, that is true. Children are asymptomatic. They do not show symptoms. This is because their immune system is considerably stronger. You have the strongest immune system in your life when you're young. Um, it only goes downhill from there. But because they don't so sh show symptoms, scientists thought that they were not getting infected. Blind studies were done on just, I believe it was 72,000 people, the one that I read. Um, and it turns out that children do get the coronavirus just as often as adults or elderly people. But because they do not show symptoms, it doesn't seem like they've gotten it. And it, it's why they got overlooked in the initial testing that was done. This is a really great example of how science builds, right? Science is not ever written in iron per se. We learn about it. Much of what I told you did not change. But little teeny tiny details like this one change. They develop, especially with something as new and unfamiliar as the coronavirus. Um, I was asked this question by about three or four different students between the different classes, and I just wanted to take a little bit of time to address it since, you know, comparatively a large number of students asked it. Um, how long do I think the coronavirus is going to last? Okay. How long is the corona... This, this is kind of many questions that's being asked here. I'm, I'm getting that sensation. So how long is it going to cause us to be in quarantine? The answer to that question I have been saying, my best educated guess is a year plus. Um, this is a educated guess, right? It is a hypothesis. Um, I don't have data to support it, but based off of how quickly scientists have responded to viruses in the past and what experts have told me, um, a year plus is how long we should expect to at least be in quarantine or a quasi-like quarantine state where we're doing some kind of distance learning and some kind of in-school learning or something like that. Um, okay, but this question is technically asking how long will the virus last? Okay, so the second way we could answer this question is how long until we have a cure? Because that's different than how long is it going to affect you personally? right? So a cure or a vaccine is very difficult to make. Um, and we talked about two different methods that this virus would effectively be cured, right? Either a vaccine or herd immunity. I think that both of those are still a long ways out, um, certainly more than a year. Um, 
hard to be certain on that front because it's so susceptible to one group of scientists, right? There are hundreds of scientists around the world, hundreds of groups and hundreds of hospitals that are trying to find a vaccine or a cure. Likewise, there are hundreds of governments that are controlling how quickly we gain herd immunity. And so because there are so many variables, it's really hard to make a good assessment on how long until we have a cure. How long will the virus last? That is what this question actually is, so let's answer that as well. Even though I'm pretty sure that's not what you guys were thinking when you asked it, it is what you asked. So I want to make sure that I'm answering all possible questions here. Um, the common cold has been around for centuries, right? Um, and coronavirus, right, it's going to last for a very long time. Singular viri, like a singular virus, is going to last for a long time. Um, it, it's just like the common cold. It's going to, to, as long as there a host, there is a host that the virus can live in, it will survive in a small pocket of the world or in a small community somewhere. Um, because it, it's just how viruses work. It's, it's resilient in that regard. Um, as long as there's a host, it can live, right? So will there ever not be a host? Probably not. Um, People are constantly being born, so there are constant places that the virus can find a host in. However, by the time that our grandchildren are around, the only way that this is going to affect any of us is your grandkids are going to need to go to the doctor when they're young to get a vaccine shot, and that's about it. Okay. So three different questions. In summation, quarantine is going to be a year plus. A cure slash herd immunity or a vaccine, more than a year plus. Um, how long will it last? A long time. Okay. But it won't affect us like when we have children or grandchildren. It will have a cure either in the form of a herd immunity or a vaccine much sooner than that. Okay, there we go. Um, all other questions that were asked, asked I answered on the Google Classroom page so you can check those out from Friday just to see if there were kids in the class that asked questions what they asked and what did I say about it all right so game plan for today slash tomorrow what are we doing um, I'm assigning you guys a reflection rather than doing a test on this unit that didn't seem to make sense to me because it's um, it just it didn't seem like something that you make a test on and I think a reflection just makes a whole lot more sense um, so there are seven different questions that I've written out here, and I would like you to answer four of them. The first five questions are all things that we discussed in our videos. Um, and it's also arranged chronologically. So items one and two, that's like Monday, Tuesday, specifically more Monday. Um, three was the Bozeman Science video, the only video that I did not personally make. Um, and then four and five are things from Friday, right? Um, as well as the, the reading that was posted for Thursday. Um, question six and seven are much more personal questions, asking you guys to talk about how this has affected you and what's something that you can do about it. Again, you only need to answer four out of the seven questions. So if six and seven make you uncomfortable, don't pick those, right? Or if, if you don't know number two, do a different one, right? Just reflect on it a minimum of four. You're certainly welcome to reflect on more if you so desire. And then submit that through the Google Classroom page, just like we have with assignments in the past. Okay. Um, the due date for this reflection is Thursday morning at 7 o'clock a.m. And then on Thursday... I believe at, yeah, at about 7 a.m. or probably around midnight the, the day before, I'll post a video um, on climate change, and that will be our next unit. Um, I'm choosing climate change because that was a topic that you guys were really interested in, and also because I think there's a lot it has in common with COVID. Um, COVID is an issue that for the first, it, it's, it's one of the first issues that affects everyone in the world equally right? The virus does not discriminate. Um, everyone can get it. 
whether they're a high up politician or whether they're a working class American or and anyone can get the virus. Um, similarly, climate change affects us all. So both of these topics are global issues. They are problems on a global front that we need to take care of as a community. We need to come together as a united front, not United States, a united world to handle issues such as COVID and climate change. And I just really like the fact that we're going to be ending the year on such a strong note because these are both incredibly important topics and they both affect us very much. Um, I also want to state that just because we are nearing the end of our unit on the coronavirus, I certainly recognize that the coronavirus is still affecting us. Um, so if things come up, let me know and I will be there to support you. I want to be a part of your community if you want me to be a part of your community, right? Um, we're here for each other. Cool. All right. That takes care of today's video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.